Hello everyone, Coach Chris with Wolf Moon Brewing. Today we're going to talk about hydrometers, what they are, why we use them, how to use them. Okay, so what's a hydrometer? Well, I'm going to read it from the dictionary. An instrument for measuring the specific gravity or density of liquids based on their buoyancy. Okay, great. What the heck does that mean? Okay, let's start very simply. Distilled water, which I have here, has a specific gravity of 1.000. means there is nothing dissolved in, this, in the liquid. It is just straight water. So that's our baseline, 1.000. As we add sugars, like we do when we create a beer, we're creating wort, which is sugars and flavors in the beer. As we add more and more sugars, the water gets more dense, gets thicker, gets heavier. We can measure that with a hydrometer. The more sugars we put in there, the higher the density, the higher the number in the specific gravity. We also use this to not only measure when we're starting out to make sure that we've met whatever number the recipe calls for or whatever we designed for, but at the end of the brew, after the yeast has done its job and eaten all those sugars and converted it to alcohol and carbon dioxide, we can measure how much sugars are left in the beer, subtract the two numbers, and find out did the yeast do its job completely, and how much alcohol is actually in the beer using some math. So let's go ahead and actually use one of these, and I'll show you how to use one. Okay, I purchased this from my local homebrew store. Comes in this little fancy tube, and then the top on it. I'm actually going to put it on the bottom, and I'm going to show you why here in a minute. But on most hydrometers, most uh, beginning hydrometers are actually a triple scale hydrometer, which means there's three different scales that can be measured on here. First is the actual specific gravity, the other is potential alcohol by volume, and last is percent sugar falling. Now, I have been brewing for over 13 years. And the only scale I've ever used on this is the specific gravity. I've never used the other two scales. Not saying the scales aren't useful, I just personally have never used them. I've always just used the specific gravity and calculated all, everything I needed off of that. So let's take one of my others. As you can see, I've collected a few over the years. And we're going to do a quick test of specific gravity in distilled water. So I'm going to fill this tube up. Last tube here. Is, it's probably a little too full and that's probably going to spill. That's okay. So I'm going to take this little guy. We're going to drop her it in. Yep, it spilled a little. So a couple things. One, um, once you've gotten it into the tube and it's settled, give it a little bit of a spin. The spin will actually break up any tension, water tension, that's on the, on the hydrometer, and if you've got any bubbles attached to it, or if it's leaning against the side of the, the flask or the tube, you want to make sure that you've uh, taken care of that and you're getting a true reading. Also, because I actually did overfill this one, this actually is showing a real precise and real easy way to read these. Uh, normally, I do it with the flask or the cylinder inside of a bucket, so I don't have liquid all over the place and have to clean up afterwards. But you can read off of the little bubble that, or the little hump of the liquid that is created at the top of the flask. And then you just get down to eye level and look and let's spin it just so I can really see it. You can count the lines. And I'm reading about 0.9 9, 5. Hmm. Why is it lower than 0? 1.000. How can that be? Chris, you have distilled water. Ah. All hydrometers are calibrated at a certain temperature. This guy and this one just happen to be calibrated. Actually, all of mine happen to be calibrated at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, it's a little bit warmer than that. In my instant read thermometer, it's showing 91.7 here in my brewing area. So we have to adjust our specific gravity based on temperature if 
our temperature is not right at 60 degrees. Now this water has been sitting out in this area for a while, so it should read the same. And actually it's showing a little bit cooler at 90 degrees. So how do you calculate that? Well, there's calculators online, on your smartphone, on, your smartphone, on the computer. They're very easy to find. Actually, I'll link one that I've used uh, down in the comments below so uh, you can use that and get your adjustment. There's little charts. This is a really poorly printed one, but it'll give you an idea. Um, this one says at 90.5 degrees, I have to add 0 0.004. Well, if I'm adding 0 0.004 to now, let's take a look at it. Now it looks like it's reading 0.996, still at 996. Yep, it is at 996. So 0.996 plus 0 0.004 gets us right back at 1.000. So that hydrometer is good to go and calibrate it, and we know that that liquid is free of sugars and has a specific gravity of 1.000. Well, that's great, Chris, but I really don't care about distilled water. What I care about is what's in my beer. Sure, right. So let's get on, move on. So how do we measure our beer's gravity or our soon-to-be beer or warped's gravity? Well, if you're fermenting in a bucket, the easiest way is just to take a clean and sanitized uh, hydrometer, take the lid off the top, drop it in, let it float, give it a spin, and wherever the line is on your hydrometer, take your reading, document your reading, write it down, also document the temperature of your wort, and then go back and use the calculator to, true, to find out the exact gravity of your wort at that point in time. So you don't want to dump it in your bucket. Perfectly fine with that. You can take a sample. I'm going to pretend that this is my fermenting bucket. Kind of small, but you can take a sample of the liquid out of your fermenting bucket and put it into one of your glass tubes, or I'm going to show you something you can do with this in a second. And you can take it out just by taking a hose, clean and sanitized hose, and siphon it out. You can use your auto siphon. You can use a turkey baster. This is a really large one, but same concept. You can just suck some out and then put it into your, into your cylinder. There's also a device called a beer thief. I've also called, seen them called wine thieves. They're basically the same thing. Cool thing about this is once you clean and sanitize it, this whole thing goes into your fermentation bucket. And the pressure of the liquid will push up this little plunger on the bottom here. I don't know if you can see that. So it'll push up on the plunger and allow liquid to flow in until you get it into the, the same height as your fermenter. Once you're done, you pull this up from the fermenter, leaving it over the fermenter, so anything that drips, drips back into your fermenter. And this little hint, this little plunger with the weight of the liquid will, will seal the bottom and allow you to take your hydrometer, clean and sanitized again, and put it right in there, and then float it, spin it to make sure there's uh, no bubbles on it or whatever, and then take your reading right at eye level with the hydrometer. Now once you're done, the really cool thing about this is you can now take this and you can tip this little plunger to the side like that, and all the liquid will flow back out, back into your fermenter. So you can save all that precious beer that you work so hard to create. Right. Some of the easier ways to take care of it. So let's say that we've gotten our sample, we've filled our jar. Now I'm going to do it the way I should have done it. I'm going to take my jar and I'm going to put it into my little bucket here. I'm going to take my Drometer, put it in there, let it float. Again, I put a little too much in there. Give it a spin. Pour some more in there. So now we've got a nice little bubble. And then we're going to read it as it spins around. And it looks like it's 1.03. Two. 
Okay, so the specific gravity of this sample is 1.032. Remember, it's also it's at 90 degrees, so I'm going to have to add, as per this chart, 0.004, so really it's 1.036, and that's what I would document in my notes. Okay, and I said I was going to show you something neat about this guy. So like I said, I purchased this from my local homebrew shop. Hydrometers are rather inexpensive. This one I got for uh, just under $10, I believe, $8, $9. So comes with this tube. Bottom of the tube is a solid piece of plastic. Top obviously has a hole in it so that you can get the hydrometer out. But what's really cool is if you take the top and put it on the bottom, take a piece of foam, got a hole in it, you've just made yourself a tube, a cylinder, to take your measurements. So again, you just fill that up. I'm going to be a little cautious here and not go too crazy. Take your hydrometer, let it go in there, let it float, spin it, and get your reading. And again, this one, oh, there's the scale. looks like 1.032. So you get the same reading. What else can you use to, to measure specific gravity? You don't just have to use a hydrometer. There are other tools out there. These are the, I find the least expensive, very accurate, um, and I choose to use those most of the time. However, there are some other options, and I'll do some videos on these as well. There's what's called a refractometer where you take a drop of liquid here, put, that, put the cover on it, look through here, and you'll see a line in there, and you can get what's called a bricks reading. It's not your specific gravity, but you can convert that. But one cool thing about refractometers, uh, two cool things. One, it uses a very small amount, so you don't need as much of a sample to, to measure. Also, most of them have our ATC, which means their automatic temperature um, adjusting. So whether the temperature is 90 degrees, 120 degrees, or 50 degrees of your liquid, uh, this will adjust accordingly and all, you don't have to do that extra math step to convert based on how warm, the temp, how warm your liquid is. The other thing is there's automated methods where you can put them in your fermenter and they will report to you electronically through your smartphone, your, your computer, whatever. I've used what's called a tilt hydrometer, and it works great. Plop that right in my fermenter, and throughout the whole brewing process, or through the whole fermenting process, it will actually report to me what the temperature is and what the uh, specific gravity is at that point in time, and I can watch the graph. So I'll do separate videos on those. There you go. If you have any questions on how to use a hydrometer that I didn't cover here, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. While you're down there, go ahead and give me a thumbs up button on the like. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And while you're down there, click the bell so you're notified anytime I post a new video. Remember, home brewing is really fun, but so is drinking responsibly. Thanks for watching. I'm Coach Chris, and we'll see you next brew.